I'm Graham Stewart with ERA Architects, and we're the designers for the Ken Sobel Tower, which is, uh, we're excited to say, North America's first passive house uh, high-rise retrofit. Uh, this building was built in 1967, built as an exciting centennial project, uh, the first uh, sort of high-rise apartment building in Hamilton and the first affordable housing. So City Housing Hamilton is the owner of this, and uh, they have a visionary project to take their housing stock and to make it low energy and to make it healthy, including a lot of new units and a lot of new communities they'll be building all over the city of Hamilton. Canada has some big commitments about meeting climate change targets and building more affordable housing, and preserving the affordable housing we have is a big part of that. There's a few really key things with this project. One is about Passive House. So Passive House is a German standard, which is now being adopted all over the world um, to bring building buildings like this to be 95% more efficient than they are now. So you could say that this is net zero already. Switching this to net zero would be uh, a really simple exercise of just getting some offsets. Uh, this used to be heated by gas. It's now heated by electric heat pumps using a very, very small amount of electricity for each unit, about the amount it takes to run a toaster. This is all about climate resilience. So what do we mean by that? This was modeled to be comfortable, healthy housing in the worst climate change scenarios modeled for 2050. Um, so this is about keeping people warm in the winter with very low energy, and it's about keeping people cool and comfortable in the summer when days in, in this region will be very hot and very humid. It's also about uh, health and ventilation. So this is something that we built into the project early on, that each unit would have direct uh, fresh air, uh, operable windows, and a place that is comfortable and healthy all year round. And now with uh, the global pandemic that we're all in the middle of, um, this is more important than ever for sheltering in place and for making sure you have uncontaminated, healthy, uh, healthy fresh air in your unit. This is gonna be a seniors building, um, so that becomes all the more important. When you look at the main piece of work here, a lot of it is on the exterior. And so you see new windows, they're triple glazed Passive House certified windows, actually manufactured in Canada, and a new winter coat on the outside of the building. So it used to be uh, no insulation at all, just uh, concrete block and brick and some plaster on the, on the inside. And what we've done is added about six inches of new insulation on the outside and a new uh, uh, shining white eaves coating with the triple glazed windows. On the interior, we've added a stud wall and another four inches of bat mineral wall insulation. So that sandwich gives you a, a very, very large, impressive new winter coat, which means that as the temperature swings outside, you're gonna stay stable and comfortable on the inside. And the type of insulation that we're using here is a mineral wool. Um, a mineral wool is something that's uh, really well suited for this. It's really the industry standard, especially from a European perspective where this standard was, was created, the Passive House standard, in that it is a low energy product with low embodied energy, meaning it doesn't take a lot of carbon to actually make the product. It's a waste product that's repurposed. So in and of itself, the product is contributing to a low carbon building. Also, it's non-flammable, which is something that is a bonus to have in any building. One of the things about Passive House is there's a few things that you achieve in a building to, to meet the standard. So one is that, that new winter coat, making sure that you have an amazing amount of insulation so that the, the temperature on the inside is stable no matter what's happening outside. The other is air tightness, uh, a way that uh, heat transfers through a building is also through a leaky envelope, through leaky windows or leaky walls. So the air tightness standard for Passive House is really, really tight. Um, and that requires a whole series of air tightness tests. Um, so that's been done. Uh, all of the air tightness tests so far done in this building have passed. And at the end of the project, the whole building will have a full building air tightness test to validate that it was that level of precision was achieved throughout the building. This is about a partnership with the trades on site uh, to make sure that no one's cutting any corners, that um, all the gaps are sealed and that there's a continuous um, uh, air barrier throughout the building. And that's that's been achieved here. This is, uh, as far as we know, one of the largest projects that you has used mineral wool as the primary in exterior insulation with an EAPS coating. This is a very standard application in Europe um, that we're bringing here in this Passive House retrofit. And so for some of the trades, it was uh, the first time they'd done one this large, but after a little bit of training, they got going and now here we are. So we think this is a very cost-effective way to have high performance um, in new builds or retrofits looking for a really solid envelope. 
Some of the other factors that we looked in here was life safety. So we introduced a, a sprinkler system throughout this building that surprisingly wasn't required by codes in a retrofit, but the owners and ourselves felt it was very important to really focus on life safety. And again, with uh, the air supply, you have an airtight building, you're bringing in fresh air from the outside, but it goes through a heat exchanger to make sure that all of the waste heat is preheating the air coming in in a winter scenario. Uh, that gets direct ducted with new direct ducting into each unit for uh, clean and fresh air. Um, that's then exhausted. And then in the, the summer months, what we actually had to worry about um, wasn't heating these units. That's actually quite, quite uh, simple when you've got such a robust envelope. We had to focus on how do we keep it cool in hot days? So we introduced a central cooling system that's a low energy tempered air. So dehumidified and slightly cooler than the outdoor air, not the 21 degrees on a 35 degree day that you get at the mall or something like that, that generally makes people feel uncomfortable. This is about modeling towards people's general comfort, not about a degree Celsius. Um, we also have ceiling fans in each unit and operable windows. And most, as you can see here with the floor plate, uh, have opportunities for cross ventilation. So in the shoulder months, ceiling fan and cross ventilation. Um, and, and in the winter months, close your window, you get uh, heated really easily. And in those hot August or July days, you can close your windows and turn on that, uh, that central cooling system. And the Neighborhood Association is, is a, uh, excited about this project, revitalizing a tower which has been in their neighborhood for 50 years. And so we're really excited to see this um, come together with all the great partners. And we're hoping that uh, this is the start of what could be retrofits of the many thousands of these buildings we have across the country. Uh, the bulk of Canada's uh, rental housing uh, is over 40 years old and it's all aging and it all needs a bit of TLC. And this is a fantastic model to give this um, another 40 years of service life and meeting 21st century expectations. So the Hamilton Harbor, where we are now, is going through a major redevelopment. It's very exciting. It's one of the more exciting projects in Ontario for a development of a new community. And they have these big ambitions of mixed use, um, mixed affordability, and low energy new neighborhoods being built uh, on the old industrial harbor. And the Ken Sobel Tower is the first project uh, in that revitalization. And the community is really thrilled that there's been this investment to make sure that the first project is affordable housing, seniors housing, and is extremely ambitious in terms of pushing the envelope on energy performance as North America's first passive house tower retrofit. And so hopefully this is the beginning of many more projects like this where we're looking at our entire housing stock in both a building new and doing retrofits uh, to get us where we need to go by 2050. The many tons per year that were emitted in this project are now being saved. Um, this is a bit of a technical term, but the passive house standard wants you to achieve 25 kilowatt hours of energy use per square meter. So it's a very, very sort of technical term. So 25 was our target. When we started, this building was at 375. So we had to go from 375 down to 25. Um, and that's what we've achieved here. And if we did that across this, the housing stock like this across Canada, we could save more than three megatons of carbon per year.